All right. So for Cleet, let's just quickly look through the let's just quickly look through the video. So there are autos. She has autos. We have four uh, four views here, and then she has her empowered auto here with her E from the front view, and then her alt. Now, unfortunately, I think I dropped frames there, which kind of sucks. Yeah, I dropped a couple frames. No, one, two, three, four, five, six. Feels bad. That's my performance issue. Okay, so we're gonna be looking at these things and then we're gonna talk about sort of like what character she's portraying here as well as the poses and how they go about doing this. In this situation, Klee, as we sort of talked about before, throws all her stuff. Because in this situation, she's actually throwing bombs. If Klee was like a normal fire mage, she would probably wield fire and throw fireballs. But in this situation, she's conjuring bombs from her bag and throwing those which explode and create fire, right, essentially. And it's cute for her because if you just film yourself throwing a ball, you can throw it very normally. But, you know, when a character is small and is like excited to throw things but needs to put in a lot of effort, but also needs to be cute. Like someone that's like, ah, how do I throw this? Yeah, right? If you have like those three pillars, then that will sort of guide you with how you're gonna animate. So for the first thing, for this first auto, in this situation, someone that moves this much kind of doesn't have 100% control over their balance, right? If you look at someone that's like a baseball th baseball player, right? Um, they throw balls, they throw the baseball, and they have full control over their body, and they're optimizing exactly how to throw it to throw really fast. But in this situation, Klee just wants to lob it. She wants to lob it like with all her effort, but she's a child and she doesn't have that much strength, so she's just gonna try. And in order to do that, you need to involve your whole body. So you counteract by leaning back as far as possible for your antic, kicking your leg out, kicking your leg out, woo! So that your center of mass is over back here. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna use your momentum to throw it this way by leaning forward as much as possible, catching with your foot here, and then just like bending over, right? That's what she does here. Woo. Woo. Honestly, she doesn't have she doesn't really need to kick her her foot out this much. Like if if you want to just throw it, you could just throw it. But when you kick like this, you're able to wind back further, right? So that allows you so instead of just being like foot here and then back straight, she goes further back by kicking her foot out this way, and then she can bend further back so that she can have more distance to transfer energy as she throws it, right? Woo! Now, I think it would have been cute, perhaps, if she was a little bit less conservative. She basically is trying to stay within this hitbox range because you can't go too far out of it. But you can see that the moment she starts throwing, her butt starts going backwards to counteract her, her weight going forward as she throws it. And she does the same thing for her second one. Woo! But it's a little bit more, a little bit more lower this angle here slightly smaller Woo. I think in this situation is cute because she's actually just really oh, let's look at the footwork the footwork is kind of cute too would you so feet pointed inwards very cute but you can see here when she throws she's on the back of her heels so she's not very very grounded and I think that's like a communication of inexperience and just childlike nature because a lot of kids are always just like bouncy bouncy never planted they have a lot of energy and also sometimes you know when they're trying to do something they're not the most experienced so they're not like oh cool pose <laughs> but on her heel she hops on there back here she does a little hop here which is really cute and she closes her eyes <laughs> can't see Woo. and then she does a spin this is really cute on her third one Actually, if you look at this, this front pose is really, really nice. You have really nice contrast. So let's look at this front pose in this, in this one here, here. So straight line, angle, very nice. Throw, what you get is you get a counter angle like this, right? Or a counter kind of pose. So instead of being like, like this, you have an even more like this. And then instead of facing this way, you have opposite facing. So a lot of times when you're trying to animate your antic, your beginning action to your end action, the more you can do juxtaposition of opposites, the more, kind of the more, uh, I guess the more mileage you get. And so if we take this this angle, the question is what we do after that. 
So instead of doing this, now you have this, right? And that reads very, very different. So then into this from facing left to facing right. And this pose is really, really cool. Nice. It's really nice. You have perfect straight, bend, crossover. It's very, very dynamic. And you have a lot of um, asymmetry. Asymmetry is key. Then you have a nice spin. There are situations here I think that maybe we could push things, um, but it's really not too bad. Like I think here, when she's going here, everything is moving at the same time. Here, you track hand, hand, head, all move at the same time. But theoretically, I think maybe the hand could drag a little bit, even more so here. And I think this is where you get elasticity with the character. Like the more you drag things, the more you get the stretchy feeling, which gives a little bit more resistance and a little bit more like malleability. Um, I would say for this case, for Genshin Impact, Genshin Impact really doesn't necessarily have a very stretchy style in most cases for their characters. And that's fine. That's just their approach to it, right? I know for League, we would like to see a lot of stretched contact poses and a lot of like when they're spinning things dragging very far because in those situations, you get a little bit more of like this visceral reaction feeling when you're watching it. I think that's really cute too. This explosion of energy when she jumps and throws and lands on one foot. Like, there's absolutely no reason for Klee to need to do that, right? But she's having fun. She wants to do that. She wants to land on one foot, especially on the back heel of her foot. Whoa, whoa. I think that's cute too. Let's look at this this spin spin thing. So it's funny because when she does a spin, she's not spinning into a jump. She spins first, then plants her feet here. Spins, plants feet, does an antic, jumps, and I think here you could probably we could have probably one frame of like straight. At least for league we would do straight. And then we would kick kick these legs up. And this pose perfect. One kick out, one straight one straight mainly straight. Boom. And then we would probably here, we would contact a little bit more straight, boom, and then bounce. But you can see here that the, the motions are all, are all sequential in terms of one thing has to happen first, then the next, then the next, then the next. If, if the problem is like, if she's doing a spin here and jumping at the same time, it would be very, very, it would feel very different. And also just probably wouldn't feel as nice because it's very hard to do a jump spin in the same way you would spin then jump. Jen, jump, ta-da, present. And we can maybe look at some of the details here. It's nice that it's straight here, and then when she comes down, you get a little bit of wobble. So right here, her root wobbles this way as her weight goes this way as she tries to balance, right? So root to the left, body to the right, as she tries to keep her center of mass over this foot, uh, over her heel. And then she wobbles back, so her extreme is this angle, but then she wobbles back straight up to here because she's more in balance, right? And then also it's one of those things. Why does someone keep their arms out like this? Um, it's the same idea as like, if you have something where you have poles on the outside, this sort of distributes the weight of the center of mass to be more balanced. And because you have more, um, at least for arms, if you have weights on this end and this end, that you can move these up and down very easily to sort of influence where this is in terms of your planted foot, right? So that's pretty important in this situation where if you're off balance, you throw your arms out because that gives you counterweight immediately to the position where your center of mass is going off balance, right? Perfect. All right, so we've established for Klee that she is young, wants to have fun, and wants to be cute. So, a couple of things. Cute, this is a very anime thing, I feel like, but for a lot of characters, when you're a little girl, having your feet point in, having your knees buckle in a little bit makes you cuter for some reason. Kind of maybe like a more effeminate character 
and elbows in. So knees in, elbows in. The more you have those kinds of poses, I think a lot of times they read as either girly or childlike in a way because they have less confidence, right? Um, a lot of times for guys, it's always like alpha A. The more open you are, the more like man, the more man spread you have or whatever, you have more power, more influence, more presence. Um, but you can see here how like something like that just feels very, I don't know, how do I describe that? Like energetic, happy, but also like girly. Hmm, I'm not sure how I describe that. Do you think there's consideration of the backpack's weight or is it mostly secondary? Um, yeah, I would say that it's considered, uh, I think honestly, like all of the secondary motion on it is really nice. Um, I would say in, in actuality, it's probably just more of like, you can imagine it as someone else with a backpack that they're carrying that it's not that heavy. She says it's heavy in Chinese and maybe in English. I'm not sure if she says it that's heavy. She has a couple things, for example, where it's like, it, it does introduce the idea of being off balance sometimes. So for example, when she throws her E right here, where she throws it forward. Again, we have another one here where she does a hop spin. Hop, spin, antic, into jump, into woo, into this. And then she's like, oh, I'm off balance. Again, arms shoot out. And then again here, you just, one of the things you want to remember is just like posing, right? Just like making sure the hands are posed out, palms this way. This is one of those things where it's like, stop, stop. I need to be careful. I need to like hold, prepare. I don't know. There's an interesting thing where like maybe guys and girls are different where like guys will like splay their hands out or something versus girls will they may like keep it more like beautiful shaped. I don't know. Okay, let's look at this. So she does antic down to really cute pose. She waves her hand around and throws it forward. Okay, there's a nice detail here too, that's one. So you can see here that she throws it forward, but there is an interesting, I mean, most of you are probably familiar with Newton's law, right? One of Newton's laws, I forget which one it is, but let's double check. Newton's, all right, Newton's third law. Obviously you cannot see that because the color is horrible. And I think someone mentioned this in the, in the, in the stream previous, but um, this was basically an example of uh, when you have a force and you're trying to move something, um, there is always an equal and opposite reaction. So for example, if you're gonna throw something forward and it's very heavy, the f it will also exert a force on you backwards, right? So for this ability where you're doing autos and you're throwing very, very, very tiny, tiny bombs, you don't have to show a lot of counterforce when you're throwing them. But for something like this for Cleet, there's a small detail here where this is a very, very big explosion and she's spending a lot of energy throwing it forward. Boom. You can see here that she does a small hop and as she throws it forward. What's interesting is that when you're on the ground, you usually brace yourself for these things. So you use the ground as support to push something forward. But when you're in the air and you do the same thing, usually, if the thing is heavier than you or has greater mass, it will push you at the same time. So you can see here, that's cute because like you can see, at least from this perspective here, what color do we use? Blue, is blue okay? You can see here that Klee is gonna be shot backwards. And you can, you can see sort of the, the rock here um, that the background is tracking with her so she gets pushed backwards, but she gets pushed backwards and up in this slight direction, very, very slightly. And then obviously you have like freaking huge camera shake. But it's just one of those small details where when you're in the air and she's throwing something and it's like very, very big impact. One way to sell it also is by shooting the character backwards. Um, I did that for Battle Academy Ezreal uh, where he uses his ult. And I mean, even for his cues and all that stuff, he has a lot of stuff where he's like forward on his front foot. And then when he fires, he gets pushed back on his back foot, right? That's a way to show force because once you've shot it, it exerts something on you. And because we as humans are not like steel, made of steel and we are malleable and we are like flexible in the sense that we can bend limbs and whatnot, we have to absorb 
that force and momentum somehow, right? Um, for his ultimate for Ezreal, he gets pushed back very, very far, and he has like marks on the ground and all that stuff to show. Um, but that's basically just one example. Uh, these are all really cute. I don't have too much to say besides the fact that like, you know, make cute poses. And then this is pretty straightforward. All right, we can look at this, which is pretty interesting, I think. I think most most people always really enjoyed the ultimate animations right before. Um, we can sort of, what's fun about these things, I think, is the fact that like they have forced cameras. So this perspective for the camera is basically always gonna be how you're gonna see it. So this is where animators can get really, really, really funky because they're allowed to sort of do stuff here. Actually, look at that, that's really interesting. I feel like, for this, the background. Okay, so we can see and check here, the background here is indeed matching here. So from an engine perspective, it is using the same game space. Now the question here is whether or not it is rendering Klee in the real world doing this specific animation. Because there's a funny thing here that I've noticed, which is right here, this bomb that she's casting, it has a shadow. So the shadow is on this bush. And I don't know if that's like because it's rendering on a green screen or something, or it's in front of that bush. I feel like it's... Or is that is that or is that just the engine not not doing its like outline here correctly. Huh, I actually don't know. It seems like it actually might just be this outline that's rendering, rendering a little bit offset right there. But this is cute because this bomb has an angry face. Its ears have bones on them. And then right here, she squashes it. Wink. And you can tell in this situation, it's basically just a, one single bone here and scaling. Boink. She transforms, ooh, that's cute. She transforms it into a white one. Wow, her face. So happy. So I think what's cool about this is that one, you get to do camera work, but then two, since you know that this is always going to be from this perspective, there's a lot more stuff that you can keep track of. So for example, theoretically, if it wasn't frozen here for a couple of frames, the eyes probably, maybe if you wanted to do some detail, you could offset them. You can see here actually too, when she blinks, she doesn't do a full blink and you don't need to do full blinks all the time for characters. A lot of times we actually do half blinks when we're, when we're looking at stuff and speaking. I feel like here the hands could maybe offset and drag a little bit more because it's the same here on this frame and this frame. Woo, but it's really nice. Get some elasticity. And then here she goes from this pose to this pose when she's going up in the sky. There's probably more room to maybe have like one more pose in between here to have like her facing up here, looking this way and her arm like right here. Because this is where her hand was. Now her hand's up here. So having something to sort of connect these two and transition as long as well as keeping this in, in frame somehow. Like, I don't know, maybe like right here or like right here as it goes up. My lines are disgusting, but you know, somewhere here. Not there. One, two, three, up, up. So probably around here with her face still visible or something as it goes up would help to make it feel a little bit more more smooth, I think. Cool. But I think this is one. So for Klee on her autos and all her abilities, she has a lot of this feeling of bounciness as well as like sometimes almost being to the, 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 the edge of unbalanced or like falling over. But, you know, as someone that likes to play things dangerously and on the edge, I feel like it's, it fits her personality as well. It communicates sort of how she runs around the map and how she runs around the world. She's just, 
she's just there to throw bombs and do stuff right um you can see that on, on all of her like wind downs she always has like a little bit of a of a bounce and whenever she does an action she always either jumps on one foot or does a spin or does something that is not streamlined but she does it because she wants to and it's fun right uh, i mean all the all the animation on the backpack too is really cute um a lot of overlap a lot of jiggle i'm not 100 percent sure if that's all keyframed or not but it just adds a lot of times just these things add, add a lot more life to the character right so i think for example she has she has these things here this little thing with has, which has a couple things she has her her hair that flops and then also her her feather and her cap and her backpack too is not just stuck onto her back the backpack here also itself at the very top bounces up and down off her back which is just it's very very cute very very nice all right we're going to move on from clean now we're going to go on to mona because i do need to keep keep a little bit of time <laughs> 